Welcome to today's Lunch and Learn webinar. We'll be jumping right into the MAP360 bloodstain pattern analysis workflow. The fully integrated BPA workflow has its own intuitive ribbon. We'll start by defining the room origin and identifying surfaces to align our images to. We'll then analyze the stains and visualize the area of origin in 3D. Lastly, we're going to create a BPA report and include this in an evidence marker report. So this workflow was validated by Johnson County Crime Lab, an accredited forensic laboratory. And if you're interested, the white paper is attached in the handout section. All right, let's get started. So first of all, we're gonna import a point cloud in LGS file format. And this is gonna be our kitchen scene. So we can see there's a ceiling on it that we're just gonna to wanna to clip out. So we're just uh, gonna be working with the points for our analysis. So if I go back to a top view, uh, this wall on the right-hand side, that's what we're gonna be working with. So I'll just hide some more of the points. And we just have uh, this one wall. So we're gonna go to the analysis ribbon and select BPA open. And this opens up that new ribbon that I was talking about. So you can see all of the um, buttons are organized in the correct steps. And we'll start by defining the origin for the room. So you can have more than one room origin, but for this uh, example, we'll just have the one in the bottom corner of our front wall. So I'll pick a point on our front wall, and then we'll just rotate around and we can pick a point on the left wall. So this door has some uh, different surfaces, so I'm just gonna pick one on the wall just so we can be consistent. And then lastly, it asks for a point on the floor. So at any time, you can skip any one of these uh, surfaces and define the origin at any point in the room. All right, so our origin's been drawn in the bottom corner at the intersecting point, and now we'll look at our surfaces. So it automatically created three surfaces from those selections, and we could also create a new surface if we wanted. So I'll set a color for the front wall and we'll just make sure that we're aligning um, our view to that surface. So we can see we have the origin in the bottom left corner and we're looking at our front wall. So let's zoom in a little bit tighter here to look at the stains. And then we're gonna add some photos uh, of the stains to the wall. So we want to make sure we're just putting it above where we want to align it to. And then we're going to pick points in the photo and we can pick as many points as we'd like and try and span them across the photo and then pick the corresponding points in the point cloud. So the image gets aligned based on those picks and then we can use this slider to adjust the transparency and the on and off toggle just to see, make sure we're aligned correctly. So I'll move this out of the way and we're gonna add another photo to this surface. So we'll go to group A2 and I'll insert it on the, just above here. And again, this one doesn't have a whole lot of um, markers to reference. So it is better when you can spread out uh, the reference points. Uh, if you are using targets on the wall, that is the best case scenario. And you can just span them across the image uh, for the best alignment. So we'll zoom in here and just check the alignment of this photo. And at any time we can use the adjust button and select the image. 
and then we can use these little toggle buttons to move that image up and down. So we'll change the increment here just so we can move it a little bit uh, in smaller increments. And then we'll add one more photo uh, to the surface. So it does zoom in on that photo for you um, and you can see all the different stains that are included in each photo and that we're going to be analyzing. So we just want to make sure that this is a very important step and that we're going to make sure the image is aligned correctly to the surface before we identify those stains. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, at any time, you can realign the photos from scratch, but we're just gonna start adding stains. So we'll give the stain a name. We're gonna start with that first image, which was A1. So you can zoom in as tight as you need on these images uh, for your stain selection. And you'll start by selecting the leading edge of the stain, the other end of the stain, and then adjusting the width. And at any time, you can use the grips to adjust the gamma angle, as well as the width and length of the ellipse. So we'll continue adding some more of these stains to this image. And we can adjust them as we go. Then we can go to our next photo. And I'll change the name for this one as well. So as I'm going through and marking these stains, um, I'm hitting the space button to run the command again, or you can hit the button on the ribbon. You'll also notice I like to extend the cursor out uh, so I can see the line marking that gamma angle. Make sure it's aligned with the tail of the stain. And then we'll move on to our last image. So this one has quite a few more uh, stains on it that we can use. We can start marking. So it's really easy to add additional stains. Um, you can also flip the direction of the stain if you've drawn it the wrong way, uh, or if you just want to check that it's in line with the tail of the stain. It's a pretty quick process, uh, so you're able to mark quite a few stains in a short period of time. Just add a couple more here. All right, then we can take a look uh, and see where all of these lines converge as we automatically are drawing um, their trajectory lines. So we have a pretty good convergence, but there is this one outlier. So we can select it and zoom in. And if you wanted to make adjustments to the stain if needed, you can, or we can open up uh, the edit stain dialog. And this allows you to change the name, exclude it from the analysis and add a comment. So now we're gonna do the calculation for the area of origin. So we'll select the convergence button. I'll leave the name as group A as all these pictures labeled as A, and then I'll select all the lines, even that one that I excluded. So you can see they're all listed in here, and the one I ex excluded is also in here. So it is not being used in the analysis, but it is being shown um, 
and giving us, so the other stains are giving us the location result. And then we can set a color for the sphere and change it to a point, or if you'd prefer, you can set it to none. So this sphere is just a representation. Um, it's up to the user to adjust the size of the sphere. You can type in a value or use the slider. So we'll leave it at 10 centimeters. And then we have our area of convergence, or area of origin, sorry. So next, we'll just make sure we have a good view in the drawing area for when we create our report. So we're using group A with the room origin, and we'll leave it as centimeters and including a stain report. So the report is being saved as a PDF document. It will open up automatically. And the first thing you'll see is the coordinate system that you've defined. And we have our results based on that coordinate system and our standard deviation. We have our preview and then our stain report. So we have um, the values listed here, as well as that excluded stain with the comments and that would be your BPA report. So I'm gonna close out of the BPA routine and we can see that 3D visualization where that area of, convert or area of origin is in the scene. And we have some evidence markers here that we're gonna mark um, just to add another deliverable to this example. So we have a coffee mug on the table. I can attach uh, different documents or photos, PDF docs, uh, videos, anything I might have to these evidence markers and we'll insert them in the scene. Next one's a beer bottle. And we have another beer bottle on the table as well for evidence marker three. So we'll insert these. And there's one more on the floor, and that's the baseball bat. So we'll insert that one as well. And just to give an overview of the room, I'm going to add one more marker in here. Um, just to attach some photos for the report and that's going to be a couple different views of the room and i'll just put that over in the corner here now we can create that evidence report um, we'll attach the bpa report as the title page so we're combining both these reports together and this one will also be saved as a PDF as well. So our first page is the BPA report. And then it goes into our evidence marker report. So we've got these embedded links that we can open up the full resolution image. And you'll see in the report, we get the preview of the images as well. And then the final uh, marker with the overview of the room. And this is a very easy tool to bring uh, both of these reports together. And this can be shared or filed away, um, can be shared with investigators or attorneys. And now we'll get into uh, some final deliverables. So as you saw, uh, we can create these reports. We can also create diagrams showing that 3D representation, um, different 3D views. If there was a witness, uh, we could also have a witness view available and set that up and take some screenshots. So it's a, a great tool to have some different outputs for. And uh, some of the benefits of these outputs, um, you can quickly generate them and you can share these deliverables with investigators or attorneys. And you're integrating 
uh, the 3D aspect into it for the juries and judges. So these results can be actually visualized in 3D. You can put um, some context to it, put it within the room, um, and it helps them understand the data. Some of the benefits of the workflow is uh, saving time on scene. So it's a lot easier and a lot quicker to take photographs um, of kind of different areas and different groups instead of just individual stains. Also for the stain selection, uh, because you have these images, you can pick these stains when you get back to the office and you can continue to pick stains, exclude stains, include more stains, whatever it might be. Um, it's really easy to go back and add additional stains. And then it eliminates hand measurements, which will save time and reduce uncertainty of measurement. And um, yeah, it makes it more precise having the software do it for you. So I thank you guys for your time today. Uh, we did go quickly through that workflow. There was a lot to show. I just wanted to let you guys know that on the um, on our help desk website, we do have uh, separate movies for each of the steps of the workflow that go into a little bit more detail. So you're welcome to check out those. Um, I also encourage you to download the PDF white paper and read through that. And if you have any questions about the workflow or um, the validation paper, please don't hesitate to contact me and let me know. Um, I'm also happy if you have any feedback on the feature um, to share that with me as well. And then now uh, I have Hal on the line with me. So we're going to open it up to some questions. Uh, Chanel, there was one question. Um, adding, um, is there an auto ellipse function? Um, so currently there is not an auto ellipse. Uh, that's something that we can add in the future. This feature uh, was just released and we will continue to develop and evolve it uh, based on feedback from our users. So that is something that uh, we've looked into and we will probably be adding in the future. But for now, it's just the manual um, ellip or ellipse marking, which as you saw was pretty quick and, and easy. And there was uh, just one last one. Um, what is the difference uh, between excluding and removing uh, from the BPA report? Oh yes, yeah. so on the um, convergence dialog, there is the option to exclude stains, which you saw me do with the one. So excluding a stain will uh, not use that stain in the analysis. It'll be excluded from the analysis. Uh, however, it'll still be in the convergence dialog and the report so that you can have a comment with it and you can let whoever's looking at this report know why you didn't include it. Whereas if you remove a stain, it doesn't delete it from the scene, but it does uh, remove it from the analysis and removes it from the dialog and basically your selection set. So it won't be included and it won't have a comment attached to it. And um, just one other quick question. Um, someone's just having a problem finding the handout. Oh, um, so it should be, there should be um, a bunch of different tabs on your, on your window <laughs> and it'll have uh, questions where you can type in questions just below that. There should be a handout section that has a drop down and there's one file in there. If you're not able to access it though, just send me a quick email and I will definitely send you the PDF for that. All right, well, I thank you guys for your time today um, and your attention. And um, the next Lunch and Learn, we will be posting a registration link for soon. But if you have any suggestions for future Lunch and Learn webinars, please send me an email and let me know uh, some content you'd like to see or some 
workflows you'd like to see and we can set that up for an upcoming webinar. So thank you all for your time. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.